Over the last decade, we've become accustomed to the SEC dominating college football. And after this year's bowl season, the SEC's control over the uh, sport remains uh, pretty evident. Since they started the new format, that was in 2014, the SEC is 10-1 and in semifinal games. And that doesn't even include Georgia's performance against TCU last night. The Bulldogs, now the eighth team in history to go back-to-back. Some of the quarterbacks who have gone back-to-back with now Stetson Bennett, the sixth quarterback since 1970 to start for back-to-back national champions. Let's uh, go around the room and guess. This is since 1970, these quarterbacks have won back-to-back national titles. You're going to get... Two of them, maybe three of them. Stetson Bennett is the sixth. Paul, I, had, I had that one. You had Stetson Bennett? Yeah. Okay. All okay. right. All right. You lead one nothing. Marvin? Tommy Frazier? Tommy Frazier. I mean, you and Seton are tied. Paulie? AJ McCarron? All right. It's uh, Everybody's got one. Now it's Fritzy. Mr. Matt Leinart. Yes. Okay. Now it's getting interesting here. So Matt Leinart. Stetson Bennett, A.J. McCarron, Tommy Frazier, and there are two more. You're not going to get them. Give us a decade. The 70s. Oh. That takes Chris Leak out of it for some reason. Chris but... Leak of Florida is out of there. So it's not Blake Sims. Blake Sims, no, he's not in there either. I could give you the school, and you probably... That would be embarrassing, both, but do it. I'm going to give you both uh, schools, and I don't think you're going to get either quarterback. Nebraska and Oklahoma, back-to-back national titles. Yes, Paul. Jamel Holloway? No. Oh, I loved him. Anybody else? Well, that's nice, but he didn't win back-to-back titles. Anybody else? Uh, uh, Kale Gundy? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, Gundy's a good name for Oklahoma. <laughs> The whole state. <laughs> Are you okay there? Got a Gandhi. I'm trying to I'm fishing. I'm fishing for anything. <laughs> okay. Um, neither did much in the NFL. One of the players might have played uh, for Green Bay. Oh, that's embarrassing. Yes, it is. Uh, one quarterback. Uh, went back to back in 1970 and 71. The other quarterback went back to back in 74 and 75. You're not going to get it. Steve Davis at Oklahoma. Yes. And Slinging J- Steve Davis. Jerry. <laughs> Jerry Taggy. Yeah. Jerry Taggy. Jumping Nebraska. Jerry. Yep. Jumping Jerry yep. Taggy. Jumping Jerry. Yeah. Taggy. Yeah. I apologize. Yep. You almost had it. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I like that Pat Forty. Of Sports Illustrated, he, he uh, was tweeting at halftime saying maybe Georgia could do an inner squad game and uh, in the second half, and that might be a little bit nicer. And then you could send TCU on their way. Wow, that's not a nice. Yeah. Game. Well, what school is going to be TCU next year? And then will the bowl committee go? No, we're not going to do this. We're going to wait till we expand in 2024 to 12 teams. We're not going to go down this road again. But. If you're going to sit here and go, oh, TCU never should have been in there, you should have said that prior to the start of the game, right after they beat Michigan, when the playoffs were set. And maybe you did. Maybe some people did. But when Michigan lost to TCU, then everybody was like, well, I don't know. When the line came out and it was 10 and a half, 11 and a half, 12 and a half, you know, then I was like, uh-oh, this could be uh, danger territory here. If if Georgia scores a couple of touchdowns, can TCU match them? And the answer was no. TCU, uh, great season. Good for, first quarter. When it was 17-7, they got the ball back, and I thought, you got to score. If you don't score, so the difference between 17-14 or 24-7 against that Georgia team, huge. And then all of a sudden, it just went south. And continue to go south. Yes, Paul. Which fan base do you think is more upset today? Ohio State, because they really think they should have been there. A couple injuries, a couple calls late. They Ohio State had a really nice first Ohio week. State was better than Georgia that day, and Kirby Smart even acknowledged that. Or Alabama fans who are six points away from being undefeated going into the college football playoffs. 
They lost two games by a total of six points. Mm. I would say Ohio State because they went toe-to-toe with the national champs and should have beaten them. Here's Kirby Smart on the greatness of Stetson Bennett. And I'm going to tell you another important day was about three days from right now last year when he came in my office and he said, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to come back or ride off in the wind. He goes, I don't understand. Everybody's telling me that I should just ride off in the sunset and be the legendary quarterback that won a national title. And he said, that's just not who I am. Okay. I remember when he announced that he was coming back and it didn't feel like everybody was all in on Stetson Bennett coming back. You know, he wasn't a big recruit, a walk on and what he's done. I mean, he, he's firmly cemented himself as one of the great college quarterbacks of all time. He is George's Tebow. He is. Now, you don't look at his stats. People, you know, we got caught up in stats, and and I understand that because, you know, the proliferation of throwing the football and how many touchdown passes, you know, compared to interceptions. But everybody's throwing, completing 68% of their passes. And, you know, everybody's got uh, unbelievable touchdown numbers there. It didn't used to be that way. But... You're watching Stetson Bennett do what you want a college quarterback to do. Seemed unflappable. He made the big play when you needed a big play. And I know that we love to go, well, is he going to be any good in the NFL? I don't know. I just love what I saw. The last two years, he did everything that you want a great college quarterback to do. I don't know if he's going to be a good pro quarterback. There was a feeling when I was watching him last night, and I was – Texting back and forth with an NFL scout, I said, he's got a little Drew, Drew Brees in him. Like He's very confident and, and maybe more confident than he should be, but that's part of the, the charm of what he does. You, know? he, you look at the talent around him, but also to utilize the talent around him. And I also think that Kirby Smart did a great job in sort of opening his eyes to the offensive side of the ball the last couple of years because he's a you know defensive-minded guy. That offense, that was explosive. Uh, certainly with the uh, receivers, the tight ends, and Stetson Bennett had an unbelievable game. And, you, you know, keep in mind, they go back-to-back. Back. They had 15 players go to the NFL off last year's <laughs> team. 15. Got a 15 this year. <laughs> yes. Then you go undefeated. Now you're going to have players going to the NFL as well. But I like David Pollack of the Mothership sitting on the set with uh, Nick Saban and going, hey, Georgia, Georgia's the dominant team. This is where college football is. And he's right. Can't argue with that. And Nick Saban couldn't argue because it's true. Yeah, Paul. Why do you think Nick Saban, every year that he's not in the national title game, shows up and sits in for the entire college game day pregame show every year? What do you think his purpose or thought processes for doing that? I think it's just a reminder. If I'm not in the game, I'm at the game, and I'm still the face of college football. Just felt like, ah, I'm going to show up. Got my Affleck suit on, and I'm going to sit there. You know, Dion's <laughs> there. and I, I don't know. It makes him, I think, feel more relevant, uh, younger, hipper. Uh, if, if you're recruiting, uh, So I don't know, unless he just enjoys it, and I think he's really good at it. You know, he's got a a, a dry sense of humor, but I think he's really good at it. Yes, he... It's like David Pollack saying Georgia, the last couple of years, have really grabbed a hold of college football is kind of a useless statement. It's like, yeah, of course, they just won the national championship back-to-back. Of course they've grabbed hold of college football the last two years. What makes it a story is Nick Saban sitting right next to him. (laughs) You can't say that in front of the GOAT. What's wrong with you, dude? Yes, you can. You know what I mean? But no, my point is, like, that's why Nick Saban's there. Because I'm the man. I don't care that I'm not in that game. I'm still the guy. I'm still the guy. In case you're wondering, and I know you are, DraftKings odds to win the national title Next season. I'm going to guess Georgia. Yes, you would be correct. Bennett's, who is second? DraftKings odds win the national title. Todd. Buckeyes. Third. Marvin. USC. Fifth. It must be Alabama. Yes, it's Alabama. (laughs) Yeah. It's Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, Michigan, because Jim Harbaugh is going to be enthusiastically coaching them. Uh, then it's USC Clemson and LSU. Where's TCU? Oops. Oh. Yeah. 
We got some nice parting gifts for you. Mm, that's unfortunate. Uh, but, uh, yeah, based off last night. See, once we get to the uh, 12-team playoff, this way you get a better chance. Like if you're Alabama, uh, you know, some of these other uh, schools that fell like USC, now the fourth spot doesn't matter. Now your first-round matchup or the potential second-round matchup. But next year is the last year we have four teams. Then we go to 12. Now the likelihood of having a blowout like that in the national title game is going to, you know, the odds will great be greatly reduced there because it feels like then a quality team is going to win a couple of times. But TCU beat Michigan. And, and I thought, boy, it's tough to out-physical Michigan, and they did that. But last night, you saw a big difference there between what is physical to Georgia and what's physical to TCU. It almost felt like TCU was finesse and Georgia was just physical. Yeah, Paul. And I think next year, like you said, that four spot, it's like if Tulane ran the table next year, Tulane's schedule I'm sure isn't the toughest schedule on earth. They had a great year. They, they put themselves on the map, Tulane football this year. Mm-hmm. But if they go 12-0 and in the regular season and they're sitting there and there's a one-loss Ohio State team sitting there, people are going to refer back to the national title game. And it won't be fair to Tulane because they're a separate separate team. Notre Dame is still paying the price for getting blown out national title game against Alabama. How many years ago was that? Like, doesn't that feel like that was... Uh, 2012? Yeah, almost a decade. Yeah, a decade ago. And it still feels like... And I think this is part of the reason why Brian Kelly left Notre Dame is he knew there's only so far I can get. LSU, I can get a whole lot more talent than I can at Notre Dame. And I, I do believe that played a part. I think, I think Jim Harbaugh is looking at Michigan and going, I got you here. I don't know if I can get there. I don't know if we're going to be better than Georgia or Alabama or even LSU as far as talent goes. And maybe that's why he is looking at the NFL.